It's Platt, and today I ask the question, lifesavers, will it ferment? Let's go. Well, so if you've been watching the channel for a while, especially if you've been keeping up with this Will It Ferment series, you know recently I kind of got in the candy aisle, and I've been playing around with a lot of uh, different things. Uh, we've... Uh, tried Jolly Ranchers, I've tried uh, cotton candy, so I thought uh, I'd take a trip back down the aisle and found lifesavers. So uh, I thought, well, let's, let's check out, let's look and see what's on the back of the label, see if it works out. So the uh, ingredients on the back, sugar works for us, corn syrup works for us, high fructose corn syrup, we got two types of corn syrup. We know that works for us. Citric acid, which is actually not a problem. We've had it in a couple of different things. I think the sports drink and, of course, obviously, orange juice. Uh, so that's not a problem. Artificial flavors. And then, finally, food coloring, uh, red number 40, blue number 1. Uh, all of those things we've encountered before in other, thing, in, uh, other things we tried to ferment. Again, kind of like the sports drinks, some of the other candies or whatever. Uh, the cotton candy had the food coloring in there, so this should not be a problem uh, flavor-wise. I uh, went with the uh, wild cherry just because I knew I wanted a variety pack. I'd get a similar flavor, and that's one of the things I'm kind of interested in this is, all right, I got a good feeling we're going to get this to ferment. How much of that cherry flavor, though, is going to come through? That would be kind of the interesting part. Uh, the bag itself is 14.5 ounces net so we're going to get almost a pound out of uh, this again the candy's pretty much pure sugar uh, so uh, as far as gravity points or whatever we should be uh, in the high 30s uh, as far as gravity um, this will probably ABV wise I'm going to project it out probably higher than the cotton candy so we'll, we'll probably be in that three to four range. We'll have to see when we do the uh, gravity reading. So let's get started. I've already got my sanitizer in. I'm already sanitizing my uh, fermentation vessel. I'm going, these are individually wrapped, so I have to go through and unwrap them all. But let me get them all unwrapped and then we'll come back to throw them in and uh, get this party started. All right, so I have all our cherry flavored lifesavers thrown in. I threw it in some uh, hot water. We're just going to let this sit overnight. I have the airlock on, but I haven't pitched the yeast or whatever. We're just going to let this sit overnight, let all those lifesavers dissolve, and then we'll come back tomorrow. I'll do a gravity reading, pitch my yeast, and we'll see if it ferments. All right, so it's been uh, overnight. All our lifesavers are fully dissolved, so let's go ahead and get a gravity reading and uh, see where we're at. we are looking at roughly 1.050 that should get us into the fives low to mid fives so uh, actually we're, we're you know this similar to uh, a lot of beers out there uh, actually higher than a lot of your light beers you know, your Miller Lite Bud Lights are in that four range so actually be a little higher than that so uh, we got uh, plenty of fermentables in there I can tell you uh, just opening the container, the cherry smell comes through. Now, whether the cherry flavor comes through or not, who knows? Uh, I'm going to go ahead now and pitch our yeast. We're using, as uh, always in these uh, this well, well ferment series, uh, Saf Ale USO5. It's just a generic, good, clean ale yeast. You can use again whatever yeast you you want to. Uh, you won't need a high gravity yeast if for a reason you have one. You won't need one for this. You can use bread yeast, what have you. So I'm going to go ahead and pitch the yeast, and uh, I'll come back 24 hours to see if we have any bubbling, and then we'll come back in one week, uh, measure the gravity, and uh, see if it fermented. All right, gang, so it's been a little over a week. Time to check our gravity, see, uh, see if it fermented. Now remember, our original gravity came out to uh, 1.050, 1 and if we got it to, I believe, around 1.00, we'd be in, or 1.010 or something, we'd be in the 5.2 range. Let's see where we're at. 
Oh, that is not looking good. It appears we're around the 1.040 range, which means we only have a little over 1% alcohol by volume. Now, what went wrong? Is that all the alcohol can we get out of this? Will it ferment it? Won't it ferment? Um, to be honest, uh, yours truly made a mistake. And I thought about scrapping this video, but then I realized this is a good teaching point uh, out there, especially for those of you that are wanting to start to do some of these experiments at home yourself. Uh, if you remember when I started this video series, one of the things I said, or the, the modifications I allowed in this video, was the addition of yeast nutrients. Uh, when we did things like cranberry cocktail or orange juice, they really weren't necessary because those juices in themselves had more than just, you know, sugar in them. Uh, they're a little more complex, and they had other things for the yeast to eat. Um, now, most of you out there may be thinking, well, wait a minute, I thought we just needed sugar and water. I thought yeast just ate sugar. And for the most part, that's true. But yeast are kind of like us in the sense that technically you could eat pasta all the time, or technically you could eat steak all the time, uh, but your body at some point would need those micronutrients, your vitamin C, your vitamin D, iron, stuff like that. That's what yeast nutrient that you get out of a, of a home brew shop uh, gives you. And that's what the yeast really needs to get through all this sugar. And that's what we all basically had was just glorified water and sugar with some flavoring and some coloring. But there really wasn't anything else for the yeast to eat. Now, most of these experiments I've done, I've thrown the yeast nutrient in. Uh, I was out. I'd used the last bit on another experiment. And with the original gravity at 1.050, I didn't think it was too high for the yeast, but <laughs> I was wrong. Um, so I thought, though, that this would be, like I said, a good, uh, a good uh, coaching point on this. Um, I will leave a link down below if you'd like to get some yeast nutrient, uh, what kind of yeast nutrient I use. Um, and I suggest that you would get some kind of yeast nutrient. But I realize not everybody has access to a homebrew shop or wants to spend that kind of money, what have you, even though it's not real expensive. So I want to give you a little simple solution to that and something that old school home brewers and you know, something that has been used for hundreds of years is uh, raisins. Uh, raisins are good for uh, several different reasons in this. Uh, a, they pr provide a little additional sugar to your solution. Um, some raisins still have a little yeast on it, even though nowadays with the processing of foods, however, you're not going to find much active yeast left on raisins, but it can happen. Uh, but more importantly, the yeast and, or the raisins themselves provide those nutrients that just a straight sugar solution uh, won't give. If you've seen my video about making alcohol with just sugar and water, I talk about that. That, uh, you know, too much sugar and not enough other nutrients kind of makes it tough on the yeast. So I did not take care of the yeast in this experiment. But you can use raisins to do that. Um, I'm sure there's other, you know, kind of dried fruits or whatever that you could substitute uh, for the raisins. But raisins are something that pretty much, you know, you could find fairly easy at it, fairly cheaply. You don't need a ton of them. Maybe a hand, maybe not even a full handful in there would probably provide enough nutrients for the, the yeast uh, to work through it. So to get around to it and to finally answer the question, will it ferment? It will ferment if you don't make a mistake like I did, unfortunately. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.